Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday, so you know it's time for another episode of The Extra Point. Your host, Mr. Pierre Colta, is in the house. Of course, I couldn't do this without my right-hand woman, Miss Tasha T. Sizzle, our international sports correspondent from the Dominican Republic. How goes it, T. Sizzle? Oh, it's going just fine. I have to do. I have to make just this little announcement. Okay, I never go. understood what a hot flash was. We all family here. I'm at a certain age, a particular age. I'm. Small bead from amongst my neck and round my forehead and other areas. Please let me know. Please, because I'm on fire. You but I digress. <laughs> well, we're going to say a, a prayer for your hot flashes today. Um, Speaking of hot, we have a hot, hot show planned for everybody. They got a ton of questions, got a ton of comments. Uh, shouts out to Kenny Man checking in. Yes, stay tuned. We will be getting into the KD and Pippin beef. You do not want to miss that. Um, but before we get into today's show, T Sizzle, this show is brought to you by May Jane's Coffee. That's M A E J A N E S coffee. You can get your Colombian, your Honduran, and your Brazilian. Doing an official 18. So if you've been going on there and trying to order and it's been saying sold out, she actually is sold out of coffee. But what she's doing is trying to do an official launch. What she did when she was doing the first order, so it was just kind of like what you have to call a soft opening. But she's mm -hmm. doing the official launch of May Jane's Coffee on July 18th. So please, please support. Again, that's May Jane's Coffee, M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S, coffee.com. Dot com. And there you have it. Very, very proud of you, Miss Sasha. Uh, Denise, we're going to um, going to be sending a lot of people your way. Can't wait for your, your opening. Make sure that you all check out the website. And uh, make sure that you're available for the official launch party in Nashville. Now, T. Sizzle, speaking of Nashville, and we're going to leave that up for the people here for a little bit. I want to start off with a question for you that has a hometown feel to it. We're both born and raised Nashvillians, correct? T. Sizzle, do we have you with us? I didn't hear any of the question. Okay, no, I'm saying, there you go. There okay, you go. I'm saying we're both hometown Nashville, Tennessee residents, right? We both born and raised there, right? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Are you there? What is he? You okay? You okay? <laughs> yes. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Could you sue your pastor? I love my pastor, but if he did what old boy did to his to his parishioner, <laughs> hey, hey, it's okay. hey, it's on and popping. Okay, it's shouts out to Stephanie Coulter, Steph, Steph Strong in the building. What's up, Steph? Let me kind of bring everybody into the fold on this, and I thought this was interesting because this does have a sports twist, and it's going down in our hometown of Nashville, so it kind of perked my ears up. Now, apparently. There is a major league baseball player, ex major league baseball player, that is suing his pastor for six million dollars for having an affair with his wife. Now, long story short, retired baseball star Ben Zorbitz has filed a lawsuit in Nashville, Tennessee, um, in the circuit court, suing his pastor for six million dollars uh, for basically having an affair with his wife. Um, you can sue your pastor in a, in a situation like this, Tasha. <laughs> he it was actually what he actually stole from him from him was around eight million or so. So he needs to be happy. He's only trying to get six million back from him. That is dirty pool. That is dirty. And then when the man yeah. was struggling, you were supposed to have been the one that was counseling the man all the time. You sitting up here 
doing the mattress mambo with his wife. Oh, nice. Nice. Um, one thing that I really thought that was surprising is the more that when I you first. Know, no, go ahead. Away from the church for this particular reason, because if you have the, the man who's supposed to be sent from God, giving you the word or whatnot, and then he's doing these kind of shenanigans behind the scene, that kind of makes people think, hmm, do I really need to go to church? So this pastor really put a dent in anybody who was kind of maybe waffling or wavering on the fence about religion and what should they do, especially during this time when you really need to be, well, this is just me, leaning on a higher power. Mm -hmm. And then when stuff like this happens, it just makes you kind of say, do I want to do I want to go to church? Is this, is this how all pastors are? I mean, like I said, I love Reverend Daryl, a drum right of the Temple Church, 3810 Kings Lane. I, I wouldn't sue Daryl, but Daryl and I would have a few words. But Daryl is from John Henry and the hell, as he likes to say. And <laughs> Daryl might, might, might do some things, but he might be ready. huh? <laughs> Of eight million from a parishioner and, and have an illicit affair with yeah. his wife after counseling him. Like, right. who, who does that? This who wasn't is? something random. This was something that was that was manipulated and uh, and this pastor, uh, according to the report in Yahoo News, he baptized their three children. This man gave them premarital counseling. He gave the baseball player. Uh, counseling when he was going through depression and the whole time he was creeping in the next room. <laughs> Meet me at the creeping. Oh, no. We can spend a weekend find out what you well, well, again. <laughs> no, we're not about to make an a R&B hit out of this tragedy. <laughs> this is a tragedy. Now, <laughs> now, now, I'm not familiar with how the laws work in Nashville. I know in North Carolina you can sue somebody for um basically messing up their marriage. Um I'm not sure if you could do that in Tennessee. My thing is most guys would forego the money and just whoop his ass. Can you beat down your pastor Tasha? Now you froze on me, but um what I will say there's proof and solid evidence that this has been going on because he was like in charge of his foundation or whatever yes. he was trying to run. Yes. So that's embezzlement alone. Like damn the divorce and the affair. You have been embezzling money from my charity, from my organization to support this illicit affair with my wife. Now, no one said anything. If he's telling, telling the wife, you need to leave me alone, get your bags, get the hell on. Like, You've been listening to the Porkin album, huh? <laughs> I mean, she dirty too. You need yeah. to get, I mean. And she and admitted it. She came clean. And that's me being the type of person that I am. You're doing dirt. And then I hope he's not the type to the smart now. Read this or Google this. This is something that can that can pop up and come back to haunt you no matter how hard you try to keep this from from your children in in the future. But he right. definitely needs to be reimbursed from that for that money that that this slum, you know, this I can't even think of a good name for him that he stole from him. Right. From the right. from the organization. Damn, like I said, damn the marriage, the organization. Because at this point, the marriage is already broken. You just need to go and try to get your coin. Right, right, and, and what you know. At first, when I just saw the title, I was like, "No way that 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 I could just take my pastor to, to court." But then, when I started reading, you know that that the doing the divorce proceedings that he lost almost eight million dollars in in pro salary, I could see how he may want to recoup some of that money plus a little a little justice. Um, I'll have to have some some fist justice as well. Brandon Lewis checking in. Shouts out to the, the, a talented young writer. Um, that covers the NBA, covers college basketball, football, all those things. Can't wait to get you back on the show, Mr. Lewis. Thank you for checking in. Natasha T. Simpson, let's get down to some basketball. The Clippers went down 0-2 in round one, came back and won. Went down 0-2 in round two, came back and won. They were down 0-2 heading into last night's game. They stave off going down to the dreaded 0-3, get the win at home. Can the Clippers... 
I can't believe I'm saying this. Can they do it a third time? Is the third time a charm to get the Clippers into the finals, Tasha? Can they come back and beat Port? Um, I'm sorry, Phoenix. I don't know. That's going to be a tough challenge because again, we don't know which version of Paul George we're getting. Remember, Mike and I had said that last week, and you were like, "Oh no, not you too, Mike." We don't know what version of him we are getting. Are we going to get the shaky knees at the free throw line who missed three and then sulk down the court? Or are we going to get the one who – somebody like a Giannis who does maybe miss two free throws, but then he'll get back on that end, D up, take the ball, and come back and yank it on you. Right. Now, to let you all know how simpatico me and my co-host are, there's a question right here on my, on my to-do list here for Tasha T. Sizzle that she has not been privy to prior to this show. Have you? Have you not? I was, I was like, is he not going to send me a rundown? Because he knows if I shoot from the hip, it's going to pew, pew. Out of I know, and that's, and that's what I, I love about it. And Brandon Lewis, he agrees with you. T-Sizzle is right. She knows what she talks. Yes, she does. And stay tuned. We're going to get into a, a far more than that. But what I love about your answer is my next question was, which Paul George do you believe? Do you believe the Paul George with 16 straight 20-point games in the playoffs do you believe the Paul George that's gone on and led his team into the conference finals without Kawhi Leonard? Or do you believe the Paul George who choked at the line in game two, basically costing his team a chance to win in Phoenix? Which Paul George do you believe? Look, you can't sell me no wolf tickets. First of all, <laughs> I ain't bought a ticket to anything legit in a long time. So I'm I'm going I'm inclined to go with the with the pandemic P who shot the ball off the side of the backboard. That's the one that I believe in. Now I would love for him to prove me wrong. Okay. I would really love that. But <laughs> no, if I gotta put my money, my actual hard well, I have pesos now, my hard earned pesos down on something, I'm not putting my money on him. I'm I'm gonna I think the, the pandemic P is gonna show up. So so putting all of your pesos to the middle of the table. Yeah, we're, we're in life. If you lose this one, we don't have no money to get back up to New York with with, uh, with Spanky Johnson's booze. You saying that, that you think Paul George would choke before he did uh, something spectacular? That man going to choke without anybody to do the Heimlich, Heimlich maneuver around him. Because, <laughs> wow. I mean, again, again who, the supporting cast has to show up in order <laughs> for him to shine. He can't do it. I mean, you have a lot of teams who have superstars that can't do it alone. But when they do do it, it's because somebody contributed somewhere. Right. Right. And I mean, if if, some, if no one else on that Clippers bench is going to show up and help him, then they're not going to win this series because you got DeAndre Ayton out there playing like I thought he. Well, I, I thought the boy was going to be a bust, but he's he was treated that way. Yes. I mean, he's out there playing like he's supposed to play. Right. You got Devin Booker out there, and then CP3 supposed to be back. Uh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be tough. Without it's going to be tough. And I think the the losing game two in Phoenix is what's going to ultimately undo them this 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 uh, series. If When you have a team down on the road like that and they don't have their star playing Chris Paul, you have got to put the nail in the coffin mm -hmm. and still win. That's one of the things about Trey Young in Atlanta that I love. When they have a chance to steal one on your home court, more times than not, they do. Now, speaking of Trey Young, he, he just went into Milwaukee and stole game one in the Eastern Conference Finals. Now, I never thought in a million years I'd be asking you this question. But, but are the Atlanta Hawks going to make the NBA Finals? I'm going to tell you like this. If they don't trade the barge, it's going to go down swinging. Yeah, right. you heard me. And if you don't know what I mean, Google Google the barge. Chico right. and L and them and Bunny and all them. All he right. He said to... Boomer Sumer. Yeah, that, yeah, he's an Oklahoma grad, so he's loving that. I mean, and it's the fact, I mean, speaking of Boomer Sooner, it's like Trey from Norman. He went to play ball in Norman, and mm -hmm. now he's out here in Atlanta you know, doing big things. Uh, Mil but I'm disappointed in Milwaukee. Again, yes. didn't, we, didn't we say, okay, the crown should be passed to Giannis? Yes. And Giannis chose to stay in Milwaukee. Yes. The organization didn't necessarily choose to put any pieces around him, but 
it, it, it what, per our conversation last week, if Giannis does not make it to this final, are we going to look at him in a different light? Oh, I am. I'm going to look at him below playoff P, pandemic P, because um, at, at least playoff P can say I'm in the loaded West. If you're in the East, and yes, he did get through Brooklyn, but they caught a break with no Kyrie because they were down 2 0 when Kyrie was on the court and playing. Um, they caught a break there. But if you can't beat the five seed Atlanta Hawks with all of the size advantages that you have, and there's nobody else on the Hawks that match you physically, that can keep you out of the paint, but yet you still keep trying to be uh, the, the third Splash Brothers, splashing threes all over the place. I know last game he was a little more committed to the paint, but. Trey Young is snatching your heart, and Trey Young is the best player on the court so far in this series. If that continues, Giannis drops several notches in my book. Yes, because you're supposed to be able to lift your team to a certain point, to a certain right. level, and you're playing. And Trey DeBarge is injured. I mean, his shoulder's injured, and old blonde patch and and uh, lemon pepper Lou. I mean, come on, you should. Right. <laughs> Milwaukee should be destroying them. Like it shouldn't even right. been been a contest. Right, right. They um, but there's something about Trey Young. It, it, he just has this gravitas about him that when when he when he paused and hit the shimmy and then hit the three and they ah, I was like, oh my god, Atlanta's gonna win this game. And that was in I mean, but then you look at, but look, they even have shoot. I mean, you got Danilo. I mean, you have some actual shooters on that team that can that can do things. So it's going to be tough if, if Milwaukee doesn't just like buckle down and just say, Hey, we got to get this done. We got to grind this out. It's, it's I'm going to start looking at Giannis in a different light. Right. We're going to have to hold him up to the light. Like that funny money. <laughs> Is it a sh like they do down here? If you give a thousand peso or 2000 peso, they, they hold it up to make sure it's not funny money. Right. Somebody need to, to, to lay Giannis across the table and put that little brown, uh, twenty dollar bill mark on him and check and make sure he legit. Like Giannis, and, and I was one that, that thought that he would be next up for the crown. KD yes. proved in last uh, last um, round series that there is a huge gulf, a gap, mm -hmm. a ravine between he and and KD. KD was like, this man is not on my planet. He's not in my zip code. He's not in my area code. Um, but back to Trey. Are you ready to now call Trey a superstar? I wouldn't necessarily say superstar. I would say a star, not a superstar. Because I mean, you look at uh, what's our boy down there in a uh, like John ja Morant. John ja Morant to me is way more exciting than yes. Trey DeBarge. He's box office, right? And he's not even yet a superstar. He is not. It's just the and fact you know that the we don't Christmas see fan. him. Right. right. And we don't we just don't see him often enough. The Grizzlies are not on TV enough. And had they made it further in the playoffs, because Ja was, oh, my God, that the games to play to get in. Ja was spectacular. Yes. So I don't even put Trey on in the same level as I would put Ja. They, they I mean, it's, they, they're one A and one B when it comes to these newer players coming into the league and making moves and doing things like that. I mean, I'm not going to say he's, Oh, no, he's A to Z. No, he's not. But no, he's, he does. He still doesn't have that superstar power, but I'm, I'm, I'm loving his antics. I'm right. Like, when he said that Hulk to man, that, that, that superseded the bow when he back. Oh my God. Yeah. The, the yeah. man, he, he recognizes the moment. And he's used this as a as a, a a chance to catapult himself, at least into the conversation of who's got You know who he's next. reminding me of with who? his play and his antics, Reggie Miller. You know what? And I think that's a perfect illustration because Reggie would go to the garden and give them the business and hit them with the bow. Thank y'all for coming. I'll go ahead and run y'all up out of here next year as well. And I think that's an excellent excellent um, comparison. Now, one final note on Jaw. The biggest difference between Jaw and Trey is that Trey can splash you from 30, but when Jaw get in the paint, he's not looking to show, shoot a floater, although he can. He's going to climb one of your big men and dunk on him. <laughs> he got a little bit of that Memphis in him. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, ooh. You from the mound. You from the north. 
Right. He's from the money, bottom. <laughs> pimping blanks and style. <laughs> right. <laughs> he could do yeah. So we're good there. Now let's keep let's keep in the into in the question of superstar or no. The next person up on the list, superstar or no, Tasha T. Sizzle, and that's Ben Simmons. Is he a superstar? Let me show you something. Okay, I don't know if you can see. You see that that big hole right there with that dirt around it? <laughs> put him in there. What? And then put and then put that dirt on top of him. That bo- <laughs> All right. T Sizzle, you ready to bury the guy already? He's been in the league long enough. He's had the limelight on him. He and I mean, you can't. I mean, he's had what several coaches. He's yes. had a different GM. The only thing that hasn't changed, only constant in in his basketball career is Joel Embiid. So right. you're the problem. It's right. him. Is it psychological? Do you need to go see a sports psychologist? Do you need to do something? It's and the boy has God given talent. He does. It's it's here, and that's the thing about it. Remember our discussion we had earlier about MJ. It's it was here with MJ. It was all cerebral. Ben Simmons doesn't have it here. You got if you don't have it here, you you cannot perform. You can't. Right. It's and the thing is, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the the different pieces that's been around him as far as GMs and coaches because Scottie Pippen, who who just had an article come out in GQ and is making the rounds for this book he's promoting. He blamed Doc Rivers for Ben uh, Simmons' struggles in the Game 7, saying that that you basically knew the guy can't shoot. The guy could never shoot. Why did you leave him in the game late in the games? Does Doc bear any responsibility for the Game 7 collapse? No, because what did I tell you? I hate when they constantly blame coaches when players do not perform. Right. He is paid to shoot. You play basketball. Right. You either, if you're not going to shoot, I need you to get down there and do like Dennis Rodman. I need you to be worm-esque if right. you're not going to shoot. You right. need to do something. He's not doing anything. You cannot blame that on Doc Rivers. Maybe Doc should have said, yeah, let me pull. So that is a coaching decision. So I do agree with Scotty on that. But you can't take up for him and say, well, he knew he could shoot. Well, if they know he can't shoot, why is Elson Brand still got him there? Right. They're talking to Rich Paul about, oh, possibly not trading. I mean, if he's not helping your team, what is he there for? Right. And, and and if I can't use you in the critical moments, how are you a cornerstone piece of my franchise? Why are oh, you paying, getting paid all this money? $169 million and you attempted zero shots in the fourth quarter of a seven-game series. Zero. How, like, how do you even compute that? I mean, me with my non-athletic self, I'm sure I would have hoisted up at least a mid-range shot late in one of them fourth quarters. If he's scared to get fouled, that means you got to take the ball out of his hands, which means if he's your point guard and you can't put the ball in his hands, what good is he? Now, Brandon said it was time for Simmons to go a long time ago. Where do you send him now that his stock is the lowest? Do you think there's a market for him? I mean, it's always a market for a subpar player. Let's just oh, on, let's be real. Oh, damn, Tasha? Damn. It's a lot of subpar players that are making a living coming off of the bench, doing what they need to do, whether right. it's a defensive stop, whether it's, oh, I right. mean, Robert Ory was not an also ran, but you know, at the end of Robert Ory's career, he was just basically coming off the bench, yakking them threes. Yeah, standing over in the corner, minding his business, shooting threes. Get, right, getting the ball from Fisher. Who who threw him the ball? Clyde Drexler, and he was just, just yakking and shooting them threes. Ben Simmons is not doing any of that, but right. it has to be a role because he's, he's they paid him too much money. Right. It has to be some kind of role. And I read somewhere that the sweepers in the NBA, the people that sweep the floors, sometimes they make like up to $100 million, $100 million, 100000 a year. You better get him out there and get him a push mop. <laughs> get, a re- get a discount, get some, get some refunds back. Um, when they, when they sweat drips, you better get out there and, and get to sweeping. Hold on, now you said eighty to to $100,000 a year? I read that actually this early this morning. Let me let me jot that down because you know the well, AAC- Google, Google that just to verify. Again, I was just reading, and I the person who when they was talking about it, the the guy commented and said, "Hey, 
uh, Mr. Silver, give your boy a job. You know, and that's what they were saying. I didn't realize like, that this was 6.30. I still had a little, a little sleep in my eye. I was just, I was like, damn, that's how much they make? I was like, is it a league down here? Right. I'm looking at like the AAC is about 20 minutes down the, down the tollway. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> and Brandon says, yeah, he fact checks you. You are correct. Let me get the way. Where, where's my um my clean white socks? I run out there <laughs> like Tom Cruise and slide all the way across the floor. My drawers and my button down. Oh, maybe we're, they they look too young to remember that. Movie. Yeah, they don't know about risky business. They don't, they, know, about they don't remember business. that movie. So we we go <laughs> move on. So let's say on a scale of one to ten, how much blame do you give Doc Rivers for for the the Sixers collapse? Because I give. Uh, let's get your answer first. I would give Doc at least a seven because you do as a coach you are supposed to know what's hurting and what's helping your team and if ben simmons was hurting that team doc should have said hey hey you and put the next person in right right so i do put that i do put that on doc right and i do as well and and only because doc has an equally bad track record of collapsing in the playoffs if you take away the one big three that he had back in 08 with, with Garnett and and, uh, and Allen and, and Paul Pierce, he, he really hadn't done much in the playoffs. But look, but look at who you just named. How much coaching does the big ticket really need? Right. How much coaching does right. Jesus Shuttlesworth really need? Right. Especially at that stage of their careers when they were vested veterans and had been around the Mulberry Bush. Yeah. Um, now, let's stick with coaching. Last week, Dallas, the Dallas Mavericks had, had basically said, well, she started laughing already. Damn. Um, the Dallas Mavericks said so long to Rick Carlisle, and it looks like today they're going to hire Jason Kidd. Your thoughts? First of all, Rick Carlisle put on his Michael Jordan petty shoes <laughs> with that comment he made. What comment? <laughs> Saying that Jason Kidd... Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah. That they would be a perfect fit because they're both like basically coach killers. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew he had it in him? Now he Even was in, coach at the Malice of the Palace. Now, right, right. So, a, a. So, but yeah, I mean, and the thing is, with someone like Jason Kidd, if he's coaching. You can't really just put all the onus on him if something goes wrong. Because Jason Kidd is a proven player. He has been proven as a decent coach. So if it if it implodes, it it did. Maybe what Porzingis was saying about But 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 but, but Tasha, the you said a decent coach. You got a, a, a transcendent generational talent sitting on your bench. And you bring in a decent coach. But what? Jason Kidd, I don't know who said this. This was years ago. They said the greatest players do not make good coaches. Jason Kidd is you, like you have like your magics. You have like your your, your MJs. You, you got that. Jason Kidd is not on that tier. So, But Jason Kidd was a baller. And I think he can put some of that because I think – that they will respect him more. I do want to listen to him more. And they want to listen to him more. I do agree yeah. with that. Now you threw Magic's name in there. Which one was worse, Magic's coaching career or his uh, his nightly television show? Talking. <laughs> next question. <laughs> next question. Okay, so my next question for you is. Um, do you think Luca signed off on this pick? Because you made a good point before you answer the question. You made a good point about about the NBA coaches. Some of the more legendary players didn't make great coaches, but a lot of point guards have made great coaches. Um, Steve Nash did a good job in his first year. Nick McMillan is still in the league. You, you got Ty Lu doing his thing. Doc Rivers doing his thing. So a lot of the more successful player turn coaches have been point guards. So maybe in that regard. Jason Kidd can get through to, to um, Luca, but do you think this was Luca's call? I don't necessarily think it was Luca's call, but I think he had input. I think they said, "Hey, this is who we got. This is who we really want. What do you think about it?" Okay, 
I okay, so as long as Luca had input or, or, or he gave his sign off on it, I think that that all will be well in in um in Dallas. Do you think that that a change in coach will be able to bring something else out of Kristaps Porzingis, or does he need to go like Ben Simmons? If Kristaps has not been good since, did he get stabbed or <laughs> some? No, he got knocked out. He got knocked out in a bar and back in his hometown. Yeah, right. You know, he ain't been right since then. And then that injury, because when he was with the Knicks, he was, I mean, it was, he was a superstar. Then he got down there. And I think it's also jealousy, too, because he he went down there thinking that was supposed to be his team. Yep. And he was but brought you, under the pretense that that was going to be his team. He was going to be the next Dirk. And nobody knew that that rookie that they had just swapped picks with with Trey Young was going to turn out to be Luka, like the Luka that we see today, Luka. He didn't sign up for that to ish. turn out to be Luka. Right. Nobody really ex expected that. So, right. But I think if anybody can, you went out. That's why I just kept talking. If anybody can, uh, I think J. Kidd can, because, you know, J. Kidd got a little, just a little bit of thug in him. Even hey, He may be a parquet brother, but he got a little bit a little bit of insurance over here in him. Right. He does. Now, here's a, a, another question as far as the, the Mavs organization as a whole. Now, they brought on Dirk to be an advisor. They hired Jason Kidd. They're, they're going to promote, on the surface, it looks like they're going to promote Michael Finley to executive of basketball. Um, ben Ocean got a job. <laughs> Kirby Queen. Queen. <laughs> Sharing the same dream. And our hearts can't be this one. Sorry. Finish that off. <laughs> no more love. On dun, 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 dun. Sometimes we just shy age on Flashback Friday. Um, the, now, this silly little show we, you got going on here. Billy Ocean ain't got that much shine in decades. Okay, so. but continue. Now, do you think that, that it's a mistake or a good thing to bring back the whole 2011 championship roster because the game has changed since in them 10 years. Or do you think it's a good thing to bring back those championship pieces to try to maybe build another championship? Um, I think some of the pieces are necessary because for some reason, I mean, I do it too. We tend to respect people who have won things true. more. That's true. Like, like, I mean, look, all the disrespect Charles Barkley continues to get, and he's one of the greatest <laughs> players ever to lace them up. You know, he and he and he never won, but he gets so disrespected. He does. He uh, does. I mean, I think that'll make some of the people say, "Okay, well, they did win this championship. Okay, well, yeah, this, that's another thing." But you got those other ones to be like, "Man, you ain't won nothing. So what? Right. You but, but what did you do? You, you okay? Right. It, it's all now, about it, it's all about the the team buying into whatever Jason Kidd is trying to put together if they go with it they can be successful I, I think if you come in garbed with your championship ring and your hall of fame cloak then you should be okay as far as getting people to buy in um he's got a good relationship with the soon-to-be general manager he had a good relationship with dirk who's overseeing things so i think that that it it, it may it may turn out to me if you dallas you don't have any other choice although i am starting to wonder is chauncey billups is he the basketball version of Eric Bieniemy in the NFL with Kansas City? Why can't this man get a sniff at head coach? I don't understand why nobody's giving him. I mean, now the rumor is, you know, they, they were saying Bieniemy doesn't interview well. Is Chauncey not interviewing well, or right? I don't, I don't know because I mean, he he's he's actually he's grit and grind. I mean, look what he played at Colorado. Where was he at? Boston and a few other places before he actually won that championship with Detroit. Mm -hmm. But that shows determination. That shows he's going to get out there and do what he needs to do to get it done. A so, final MVP. Right. He was the MVP of that championship that year. Yes. So I don't I don't know. And here's the thing about the interviewing Will. The whole time that he was on the, the, the ESPN game day coverage when he do the pregame show, he was very articulate to me. He could break the game down. He was always dressed well, presented himself well. I just don't see him going into a, a interview room and just folding and just, with all yeah. the basketball knowledge that he had. I mean, but look at I mean, yeah, but remember they didn't want to pull give old Tyron Lou a, a, a head coaching job for a minute. That look how long it took him. And then you True. know you brought up Nate McMillan, but Nate is the one that comes in and fixes an, 
a, an organization and then they let him go all the time. And he does not have a contract extension at this point. Atlanta, get on your job, Atlanta. Get on your job. Yeah, get on your job, tell him. Hey, just get on, get your, on job. your job. It's motivation. motivation. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare let Nate McMillan walking in. You bring in a, a – what's that guy's name that, that was the assistant coach in, in Brooklyn – that was it with Houston, Mike D'Antoni. Oh yeah, they gonna bring in a D'Antoni or somebody. Why does he? Why, and why does he keep getting getting opportunities? Every every time you say something about head coaching, they pull Mike D'Antoni out their ass. Straight out the ass, they they do. Mike D'Antoni done got more chances than you know what. I, I, okay. Okay, I'm on. I'm on. Um, yeah, we gonna we gonna let that ride now. Let's talk about another championship coach, Mr. Steve Kerr. Now, Steve Kerr went on the record this week of saying that Kevin Durant, the, the Durantula, easy money sniper, the slim reaper, that he is actually more gifted, a more gifted player with more gifts in his bag than Michael Jordan. Do you agree with that? Kerr played with one. Well, you're frozen, so I don't know what you're, where you are in your state. Okay, there you go. Go ahead. No, I'm saying it's, talking. <laughs> oh, no, okay. I'll, I'll repeat that. Steve Kerr said that KD had more was a more gifted player than Michael Jordan. He played won a championship with one as a player, won a championship with another as a coach. Do you agree? I'm inclined to to agree with that, but again, remember. Really. Remember what I said with Jordan. Jordan had to prove a point. Jordan was going to outwork you. He was going right. to outdo everything to show you I'm better than you. Right. Not, 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 mind you, I, I still think Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player ever. Not saying that the boy, oh, the boy ain't got no talent. He was very, very talented. I mean, far and above everyone else in the league. And at that time, I mean, some that preceded him and some that were after him. Jordan had more talent. Right. And like I said, Jordan had the drive. He had determination. He had the pettiness right. to do everything that he did. Like Jordan in the offseason, you saw how Jordan worked hard and how he did things. Make sure his body was in shape, conditioning right. to make sure he could play at that level. Right. KD doesn't do all of that. KD is just, I'm thin. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to run. I'm going to yak this thing up, and I'm done. To me, that's talent. Not now. I'm not saying I don't know what KD's regimen is, and I'm not saying he's lazy and he's not doing anything. KD is so gifted, so very gifted. You remember how he looked when he was in Texas? I mean, he was literally the size of a broom. And look, I mean, look, that's talent. He did not have. I mean, Kevin Durant still does not have muscles. A lot of muscles on him. Right. That takes that's talent. That boy, right. that is talent. I mean, right. he went to what four different high schools in four years and won everywhere he went. He was productive everywhere he went. AAU circuit, he was productive. One and done in Texas. And as soon as he came into the league, he was making a name for himself. And mm -hmm. I don't think it was necessarily because, oh, I have I'm this machine, I have to do this. KD is just overall more talented than a lot of people. Right. And it takes a lot of talent to be able to do those things without working that hard to, to do them. Like I said, I'm not saying he's not working hard, but when you look at the things Michael Jordan did to get to where he was, KD's not doing all of that. It's almost, and I agree with everything that you said there. And I know that, that people, when, when they hear me talk about LeBron and, 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 and me being a blind witness and all that, that I would ever slight Michael Jordan. And that's never going to be the case. Uh, in regard to this particular topic, I believe that and I, and just with us looking, we've been watching basketball for 30 years. I've never seen a person with the size and the skill set of a Kevin Durant going back to the 80s through the 90s run with the physicality through the, the early 2000s till today. I think KD is probably the most gifted player that I've ever seen play as far as physical gifts can do it all on the court, has no real weaknesses. But MJ, that heart, that that that's something that he had in him everything <laughs> it was just something about mj you wasn't going to beat him he was no. going to will himself to win he mm -hmm. made no excuses when the the jordan rules came out he just hit the weights right 
You get the weight. The, let me get in here. Let me get. Let me do these pull-ups. Let me do these curls. Let me get this, right. Let me get this weight because Xavier McDaniel is not the X Man. <laughs> right. It wasn't gonna happen. Right. And and even as he got older and he couldn't just cut through the, the, the program, air. So I have no idea what you're saying. But I'll wait. Oh, well. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. I, I, I'll just finish it with. Um, okay. That, there you go. That Jordan, even when he got to the point to where he couldn't jump from the free throw line anymore, he developed that mid range shot and would send you home from the elbow to the three point line. Yes. So it was his determination, his work ethic, his strength, his mental toughness. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, Kevin Durant may have been born with more physical tools in his bag, but he does no, no way in the world does he compare to an MJ mm -hmm. uh, in that regard. Now, T Sizzle, I ran across a troubling stat. But I want you to to try to show some shine some light on for me, because this it may be we may be counting down the days of me doing this. Now, according to to ESPN stats and information, the NBA is enjoying its greatest market share of views in the NBA playoffs since two thousand and two. I'm gonna say it. since two thousand and two, like last week. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> Are you there with me, Tasha? Okay, go ahead. Go again. Okay. The the NBA is enjoying its greatest market share of viewers for the playoffs since 2002, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, while that's significant to me, is in 2003, LeBron came on the scene. Now, we know that the LeBron went out in the first round which means that he he's playing no part in this rating spike. Does this mean that 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 it's time to uh, that, that that the NFL? I mean, I'm sorry, the NBA is maybe tiring of the king, and the fans are ready to move on to something else. And see, I was hoping you would ask me this last week because I took. I mean, it kind of made me feel some kind of way when when he was like, oh. I tried to tell you guys about starting the season and the injuries, and now a lot of the favorite players aren't playing. LeBron, you're not everyone's favorite player. Right. How do you know that, that, like the fans in Utah, you're not their favorite player in, Absolutely in Utah. Not. You're not their favorite player in Phoenix. So for right. him to say that, I was like, but ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Ain't nobody <laughs> here, to, here to see you. Shouts out to David Ruffin, RIP. <laughs> Nobody was. I mean, you can't say that. Oh, the so the playoffs are missing, missing the people are missing their favorite players. No, you're not there. Somebody's favorite player is still there. Right, and it seems to be a lot of people are tuning in to watch these younger cats. And what's up to Michael Harris? Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm sure that he would agree with this. Um, people and, and, and Kenny's a big time uh, LeBron fan as well as I am, but. I haven't missed LeBron in these playoffs. They have been just as intriguing and as exciting. And let's see, you know, they say men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. Last year, okay, you're frozen. I'm just going to talk. <laughs> and, you know, my viewing of the playoffs is limited. I've only probably watched maybe four or five games due mm -hmm. to the fact of, you know, the lack of the cable and the Wi Fi here in the home. And I read a lot of things. And it's more exciting to me because you because when LeBron retires, when LeBron is done, you got to have somebody new to latch on to. And the lack of having superstars that can hurt anybody's league, anybody's team. Because remember at the point when when the Lakers were not the Lakers and they were under Dale Harris and they were terrible. Right, nobody right. was watching the Lakers. You didn't see uh, Diane uh, Carroll, not Diane Carroll, uh, you know, the lady with the curly hair. You didn't see Jack sitting on the sidelines. You didn't see Denzel sitting in the stands when uh, when the Lakers were bad. Like, you yeah. do need a superstar on take over this league. Right. Because, uh, again, I'm just following back to my boy Ja. I love watching Ja Morant. I love watching Russell Westbrook. I love watching Trey DeBarge. I love watching Giannis. Now, a lot of the, the um, Western Conference teams, I don't really watch them because, hell, they come on. It's right. daylight savings time. I'm 
six hours ahead of some people. And I, I'm not right. staying up to watch that even when I did have the access to it. What but, you say I mean, you ain't staying up to midnight to watch Rudy Gobert? <laughs> no. Rudy Gobert, I'm not trying to watch Rudy Gobert. Now, if it's a Sunday game and I can see Spidey Mitchell play, I'm going to watch it. But right. these younger players are, you know, showing up and showing out. And I think people are enjoying that. Yes. I'm enjoying the fact that we're going to have a new finals. It, it's no it, it's no secret that um, the NBA finals last year was one of the lowest rated finals in, in NBA history with Miami and LeBron. I think that people may just be suffering from LeBron fatigue. It's been 18, 19 years. And when you have a Trey Young, like you said, when you have a Spider Mitchell dropping 48 and 10, you have a John Morant dropping 35 in a playing game over Steph Curry while Steph Curry's having an MVP season. When you have a Devin Booker dropping 47 points in the first game of the West. You got a, you got a dame out there in Portland, do, you know, been doing big things for the last few years. Yes, you got some new blood on the scene that, that's coming through. And, and, and look at the Atlanta crowd, the Atlanta market rising up. The Clippers market rising up. The Knicks fans are back re-energized. Milwaukee is in the in the mix. Phoenix is in the mix. Like that crowd hadn't had anything to root for for ten years. I think that the influx of new talent, like LeBron, bruh, <laughs> bruh, LeBron. <laughs> well, at least you got Bronny. <laughs> Now, Michael Hassel shouts out Michigan Mike checking in. He says Brady hey, in the Super Bowl. He, now see, he's trolling you right now, Tasha. <laughs> he says Brady in the Super Bowl still brings the ratings in, though. My mama could be starting quarterback for the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl, and they're going to do ratings. That's the NFL. That's a different beast. Right. Um, right. So let me ask you this, Tasha, as we, as we bring this thing to a close. What would be the best the best storyline for the NBA as far as this year's champion goes? Trey Young coming out of nowhere winning his first title. Giannis backing up his MVPs with a title. Paul George getting the, the pandemic P off of his back with no Kawhi. Or Chris Paul winning his first title. The great well, the one that's gonna make people say, wow, is Trey. Mm. To me, in my opinion, because look at what he is doing. Giannis is going to be, oh, well, we expected that. So, yeah, but it's about time you, you got this done. Uh, with Chris, pa Chris Paul, mm, it'll probably be, okay, he finally got one. You know, out of all, you know, all his friends, the Banana Boat crew, excluding Carmelo, He's, right. fin he's finally got one, but that doesn't really bring the eyes to it. Right. And then with Paul George, it'll, it'll be justification for him. Because but not necessarily move the needle. It. Yeah, it's not going to move the needle. I think Trey and Giannis would move the needle more than the other two stories. But I give the, the nod to Trey simply because he is exciting. We've seen this from right. Giannis. Right. We and what we got is it'll be more like a yeah, it got to be more like a about time because you were supposed to be Toronto two years, two, well, two, three years ago. You were supposed to be Miami last year. So, yeah, it'll be kind of like a okay, yeah, y'all got it done. Okay, fine. If Trey Young gets out of the, the finals get and, and is a finals MVP, there's going to be a huge shakeup in the NBA. And while Michigan Mike is online, I just want to say this Dallas Mavericks. The worst possible outcome of these NBA playoffs would be Trey Young hoisting a championship when you traded his rights for Luka Doncic because Luka's going to look over like, well, damn, if you'd have left me good and well enough alone, I'd be a champion right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a champion. <laughs> Get me out of here. Get your Lee's famous recipe. Get out of here. Get. Get, get on out of here. So Dallas, the city of Dallas, y'all better hope anybody but Atlanta wins because they're going to look back over the bow like, hey, Dallas. Hey, yo, Dallas. Hey, yo, Dallas. Let me holler at you. <laughs> you looking out, broski. <laughs> we got us a superstar. Um, okay, so 
Kenny Man says LeBron fatigue just felt like the MJ fatigue with the MVP they had to give other people. They got tired of seeing him. No, them. I didn't get tired of seeing MJ. Now, towards the end, when he was wearing 45 and came back, and I, even when and when he put the 23 on and got re-energized, I never got tired of looking at Michael Jordan, even though I did not like him. I, if Michael Jordan could – when they say Michael Jordan, somebody challenged Michael Jordan at the, at the basketball camp. A twelve-year-old. Yeah. If Michael Jordan is putting on some some Jordans with them dad jeans and going. To, I'm going to watch it. No, don't get tired. Never got tired of Michael Jordan. That, but, that was but, always must-see TV. But but I do think that for not just basketball reasons that people are tired of of, of LeBron James because mm -hmm. he can't leave good well enough alone. Now, like last week, we was getting on LeBron for having to chime in on KD's epic Game Five performance. Where he's talking about respect greatness while you can. We know that was a double montage, kind of like throwing yourself in there, like, you know, appreciate us while you can because we old heads. Sit down and let KD have his moment. Now, right. You know, I love me some LeBron, but sit down, LeBron. Like, <laughs> you, you've eliminated. We want to see the cast that's still playing go on vacation, just like everybody else that got eliminated. You ain't heard from Kyrie. You ain't heard from Harden. You ain't heard from Embiid. You ain't heard from nobody that got eliminated. No, but so go you. to Cancun with 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 um with the kids and go sit down. Savannah and all of them, and yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Savannah, Tasha T. Sizzle, any parting shots today? Well, the thing is, it's funny, ironic. We're talking about Le LeBron. I want to give a shout out to LeBron James and his I Promise, um, like the school that he. Had. Hundred and ninety three that actually graduated and they're all getting their um, college paid for if they choose to attend college. So yeah, shouts out to LeBron and his I Promise. Is it, is it Foundation School or whatever it is? I read that earlier today too. So shouts out to uh, LeBron James for that, getting those young men and women. Is it, is it all boys or is it girls and boys? It's girls and boys, yeah. You're getting those young people educated and showing them that, hey, there's a different way and yeah. Just getting them, you know, getting them started in the right direction. And I want to send out a, a happy anniversary to the Memphis Grizzlies because, um, let's see, it was 2012. It was nine years ago today. We drafted with the second overall pick, H Habib the Beat from Connecticut over James Harden, and we haven't recovered since. <laughs> whoa, 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 Whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. Memphis, you, you never live that down. Shout out to y'all for that. And uh, so next week, we will be back to dis to uh, discuss the conference finals and the finals matchups. Thank you, Kenny, man. Thank you, everybody, for checking in with us today, Michigan Mike. Um, Mike from Nashville. If your pastor is creeping with your old lady, you got options. See, counseling. So I creep. Yeah, just keeping on the download. Say nobody. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> and we are out of here. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. Peace <laughs>